Welcome to this video on keys to section 1.4 in your geometry textbook. I just want to share with you some of the things that I think are important in this section, which is an introduction to two column proofs. Two column proofs are what we're going to do for the majority of this course, so this is a really important section. First, let's define what a theorem is. A theorem is a mathematical statement that can be proved. You may be saying, so what? A mathematical statement that can be proved. Well, what I say here is that when you think of a theorem, I want you to think of it like a shortcut. Basically, the fact that the theorem can be proved saves you from having to write all of the steps to prove that theorem every time you need to use it in a proof. So you can just use the theorem instead of having to prove all of the little steps that lead up to it. And I'll show you how that works. In general, we start our proofs by restating given information and what we can assume from diagrams. You may recall from my favorite page, page 19 in the textbook, lists what you can and cannot assume from diagrams. And as always, in math, neatness and organization are very important. Okay? So let's move on. In section 1.4, there are a couple theorems you're introduced to, and you'll use those as reasons in your two-column proof. I'll get into the structure of a two-column proof in a moment. And um, you'll learn more and more theorems and definitions throughout the course, building your toolbox of reasons. So you'll be able to prove more and more complicated things. So the two theorems that you're introduced to here seem pretty straightforward. And this is why we're starting simple. We're going to build from here. Theorem 1 says, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Recall that congruent means they have the same measure. And this totally makes sense, because if two angles are right angles, they're both 90 degrees, therefore they're congruent. Great. Um, I showed you an abbreviation that I'll accept in your proofs using the angle symbol, RT for right, and the congruent symbol. So just so you know, there's some simple abbreviations I'll accept. The second theorem is if two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. Again, there's an abbreviation that I'll accept. Um, and again, that makes sense. Straight angles are both 180, therefore they have the same measure, and that in itself is the definition of congruence. So these are two theorems we can use in our proofs. Do not write theorem 1 or theorem 2 as the reason in your proof. Actually write out the statement, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay. So um, here's how we're going to write a proof, and I'm going to show you how to use references that will save you time later. Your textbook doesn't get into references until we get into triangle congruences, but I want to introduce them now so that you'll get used to using them. A reference is a parenthetical that tells which previous steps were used to justify the current statement or reason. So I'll show you an example. Okay, and this is one of your sample problems, but I'm going to show you how to do it with references. So you're given that angle 1 is a right angle and angle 2 is a right angle, and we want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Well, we can do that using our theorem that we just learned. So here's what we'll do. We'll start by numbering each statement. 1, angle 1 is a right angle. And I used the RT abbreviation that I just mentioned. That first one is given. Our second statement is going to be angle 2 is a right angle. That's also given. Okay, so we started with our given information, and now we'll use our theorem to state the conclusion here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And the reason is, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Now here's where I'll do a reference. The fact that I'm saying if two angles are right angles needs to be shown, and that's in steps 1 and 2. So that's a reference that shows where the information is that I'm talking about. This proof is pretty straightforward because it's only three steps, but I think as you'll see when we get into much longer proofs, this makes your proofs easier to read because people will know where to refer in your proof to find the information that they needed to use that theorem. 
So that's our first very simple proof. Okay? So let's try another one again, another kind of simple proof, but let's use our references when we do this one as well. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is state our given information. The first thing we're given is angle 1 equals 20 degrees, angle 2 equals 40 degrees, and angle 3 equals 30 degrees. And these are all given. Okay, now let's look at what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that angle XYZ is a right angle. Well, from looking at the diagram, I can see that angle XYZ is made by adding up angles 1, 2, and 3. So what I'm going to say here is angle XYZ equals 90 degrees. And the reason for that is addition, because I'm adding 20, 40, and 30. So I'm going to write addition. And here what I'm going to write in my reference is the things that I'm adding together. I'm adding together the angles mentioned in steps 1, 2, and 3. Notice that this 1, 2, and 3 are referring to the steps, not the angles. Okay. So we've added the measures 20 plus 40 plus 30 and gotten 90. And now we can say that angle XYZ is a right angle. And the reason we can do that is because if an angle's measure is 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. If an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Now which step would I be referring to here? Well, the step where I said that the angle measures 90 degrees, so that would be step 4. So that's my reference for that step. And we're done. Resist the urge to combine steps 4 and 5 and to go directly to XYZ as a right angle. The purpose of proofs is to clearly lay out your arguments step by step so that your reasons only use one theorem or definition at a time. If you were to try to combine 4 and 5 into one step, you'd be using addition and the definition of a right angle in one step, which is too much. We need to break it down so that each step does just one thing. Okay, I hope this helps clear up some issues with 1.4, and I'll see you in class.